Hello and welcome back into the Clay Golem here. We are back in Foundry VTT and while you're looking at Curse of Strahd in the background, we're not doing that. Um, I was about to move on to the next scene and then I realised that one of the things I'm about to use, we've not covered it as a add-on module. I'm sure we had, but I can't find the video so clearly I haven't. We're going to be looking in this video at FX Master. So I've got this installed here, literally FX Master. And this is going to help us control some effects that we want to play on our scenes so you will already be familiar probably especially if you've been watching these videos that if we go to configure we've got some ambience effects here that we can put on such as autumn leaves and you can see some little leaves floating around and stuff um, and a few bits and bobs like that uh, we've got rain we've used that before um, and of course, Curse of Strahd, we're going to be using plenty of fog. But there is a different way to do this. Um, and you actually, you can see there's, I've got a lot more options in my list now. Uh, because they're quite limited in the base foundry ones. Let's turn those off. Uh, FX Master allows us much greater control over those effects. Um, their intensity, their speed and all sorts of things as well as giving us lots of different options. So with uh, with that FX um, in place we get a new uh, menu item over here called Effect Controls. So it's this little magic wand thing and it gives us this menu here. Uh, so it doesn't matter that we're using this scene for it but if I go to special effects here you can see some of the things you can do is you can add um, there's not many in here but you can add your own but you can actually add things like we can drag smoke bomb here uh, and it says here it's created a new tile for that effect and you can see it in the background there so this is a tile that's now been added to, to it um, look at that yeah lovely and because it's a tile we can obviously click on it and we can make amendments to it etc etc so it's just got an animation on there etc Okay, but that's not what I'm particularly interested in. Go back to our FX Master. So under that, we've got our particle effects. Now, this is what's going to be more useful for us, um, particularly, is we've got a whole range of things, animals, um, others, <laughs> weather options that we can use. So let's, uh, we do, we're kind of in Curse of Strahd, so let's pick bats. If I click bats on, um, and you can see that just by opening that up, there's a range of options here. Now, it doesn't actually do it until I click Save Changes. But can you see we've got little bats flying around now? Yeah. So we can change the size of those bats and make them much bigger. <laughs> Here we are. I mean, they're quite cartoony, um, and I probably wouldn't want them that large. Uh, we can shrink them down again. But we can change the speed that they... Let's make them large. Let's make them big, last forever, big density... Um, and we can change the colour of them. Let's make our bats red for whatever reason. Uh, then, there we go, zooming really quite quickly. Uh, it hasn't actually made a big difference to the colour because these are already coloured. Uh, oh, hang on, is it because I clicked tick that? Oh, there we go. So it's only coloured part of them. Uh, they're going quite quick now, so it's a bit difficult for, to see. We can slow them down. There we go, red bats flying around all over the place. So we can, if we want to, add bats on. <laughs> As an example, right, we can turn that those, those off. Uh, and we can do those with all sorts of other things. We can do, you know, we can have rats crawling around all over the place instead. Uh, they will appear. Because I've got them quite small, they're quite... Let's put that up a bit. Where are my rats? It's classic, isn't it? Never quite works. Let's make them red. But there we go. Oh, there's a rat. <laughs> Scampered across the screen. Uh, so, you know, if you've got cellars and things like that, and you, you know, especially if you've got top down maps and things, you might find that that's something you want. Um, yeah, knock yourself out. Uh, can add a nice little effect. We've got spiders as well. Um, but I can see that there might be scenes where I will, for Strahd, use, um, you know, where we've got top down views and stuff, might put the occasional crows on or something, or possibly bats, of course, depending exactly where we are. So we've got a bunch of animals there. Now, under other, we've got things like bubbles. So we can put bubbles effect on our entire screen. And again, we can scale these. If I click save, little bubbles. <laughs> don't, don't ask what that voice was. Um, <laughs> but 
but again, you know, especially anything that's kind of fey realm or things, this might be exactly what you want. And we can change those colors. We can make them kind of green bubbles. And you can see that's transitioning over to green bubbles and things. So um, yeah, again, we can you can make them bigger, smaller, everything else you want to do with them, which is great. Uh, embers is going to put some crackly fire embers. There we go, they're just popping in. So again, if you've got a scene with a big fire, this might be a nice thing to add on here. Of course, you can scale it, you can make them move faster, slower. Um, and the last one of this selection that's built in is stars. Here we go, you see little stars appearing, which is quite nice. Again, in a um, you might find that they're useful for a, a, some kind of fey setting or something like that. We can make them larger, smaller, speedier, whatever we want to do. Now, that's quite nice, isn't it? Yeah, so really good options here. I mean, we're mostly interested in the weather effects here. And of course, we can just use fog um, from the foundry settings itself. But look how smoothly that comes in instead. And we can scale it, we can change its density, which is nice. So we can go from a, a lighter mist, which you will catch up with. Um, if we want to, we can make it more transparent and things like that. So we can add a lighter and we can also, if we want to, add a add a vague colour to that mist. Let's let's put in a let's make it slightly green mist that you might want for a misty swamp or, or something like that. Um, not really quite seeing that yet. Make it a bit darker. Put the actual put the click the box to make the tint. There we go. So you can see we've got that kind of mist coming in, which is quite nice. Um, might work. Yeah. Um, now, for most of my purposes, I'm not. I'm going to have a white fog, but there might be occasions where I want a, you know, a slightly darker grey fog instead. To come in over my scenes for for Strad particularly um, but I can make it yeah very opaque I can make it very dense um, put the whole whole thing up if I wanted to and almost obliterate the scene completely with that fog or of course you can use it to represent smoke by changing the colors and stuff like that uh, yeah so you can have a nice little play um, we've got clouds we can do let's turn the fog off we can put some clouds on there we go. So again, if you've got aerial encounters and things like that, you can use those. We've got our autumn leaves, which are very similar to what we had, except now we can scale them up if we want to. Uh, we can make more of them, make, you know, we can make them last longer, make it really dense, and we've got tons of them. So it gives us a lot more control over these effects than you get just with the built-in foundry ones, which is really, really nice. Um, and we can even speed them up if we want to and go slightly nuts. <laughs> get a bit silly um, and the same with like these rain effects so we've got rain there we go we've got rain coming in now our leaves are disappearing so because I put the uh, lifetime up for those leaves it takes a while for them to disappear uh, but we've got rain and we can change the direction of that rain there we go. it's coming in a bit more sideways the speed etc the density all of those things we can even change the color of the rain so if you're doing a more of a sci-fi type of um, uh, area or something you might have different colored rain for whatever reason you might have a green rain to represent its poisonous rain pollution or something like that um, rain without splash which is slightly different um, rain top down so again it's raining from your view onto the canvas rather than coming in sideways uh, and there's snow and snowstorm and you can actually combine them too if you want to so really nice little add-on uh, just to create some environmental stuff now for Strad, the fog one is going to get heavily used um, and what really is nice with this let's uh let's just put fog on what we should be able to do because it's an effect well, we should be able to use things like macros and stuff to be actually be able to change the way, you know, to turn those things on and off through other mechanisms rather than having it only through the configure. Because you don't want to have to come in here and change it part way through your actual adventure. You want to be able to click a tile or it gets set off when something happens, etc. 
um, that would be a much nicer way of doing it. Uh, I've got all sorts of fog on here now. Uh, what I can do is I can go to this clear particle and filter effects and it will remove everything from this scene for us, which is great. Um, what else have we got here? We've got filter effects. Yep, so this is a other thing that we can do with this. We can put things like make it underwater. Uh, hang on a minute. Let me make sure. Not that one, that one. Have I turned up? Thank you. Again, because I had the lifetime right up. It, <laughs> it means those particles last a long time. Um, but yeah, so under this uh, this filter effects thing, this is where we can have things like make it seem like it's underwater. So we've got that ripple effect, and of course, if you've got a campaign where they're involved in swimming, you can do that. You can make it faster, smaller. You can scale these ripples um, to make them smaller. Whatever you want to do, really, really nice things. Uh, old film, not played with that one, but yep, you can make that old film if that's what you want to do. Um, we've got again, we've got fog on here, which is a bit different way of doing it. We can turn down the density of that, uh, and of course, we can use things like color filters if we want to, um, and we can adjust saturation and stuff directly from here if that's what we want to do, which is good. So, yeah. Just lots of diff little bits we can do. And hopefully that will go back to normal very shortly. There we go. Uh, Bloom. We've got that as well. Um, lightning. So lightning is one we are going to be using for Cursor Strad. I knew it was somewhere. So we can up the brightness perhaps. Um, put the period down. So how often it happens. Or we can put it up and it just gives us this lightning effect now again because it's uh because it is an effect that isn't directly from uh, the built-in foundry background stuff the scene stuff we should be able to affect that with other means and stuff so we want to be able to use this in strad this is why i want fx master installed so when we're doing cursor strad we've got better control over fog better control over lighting um, and being able to do things like put on a bit of lightning in the background, even if it's just very temporary. You know, put the lighting on, a couple of flashes, and then it stops. I don't want to have too much of the DM having to, you know, go in, turn effects on, turn effects off. I want to be able to link it to triggers, so we can focus on running the game and the atmosphere. All right. Quite a short little video this one, but um, yeah, it's a really nifty little add-on that really helps create some drama and some scene uh, integration and stuff. So um, yeah, let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, leave a like, and of course, if you're not subscribed, please do so, and I will see you in the next one.